welcome to another webinar, a special webinar that we bring for you with the idea of making you more career ready, of increasing your employability chances. And today we have our third webinar, the third webinar of our series, which is about searching and applying to a tech job. And for this very special webinar, we have our speaker, Laura. Let remind us who Laura is for those who haven't met her. So Laura is a career development educator and coach who helps people explore career possibilities and develop skills to work meaningfully. She's a specialist in career development in higher education and global transition consulting. Her educational background is in psychology, human resources management, and she's also a certified coach. Currently based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, she brings more than 20 years of experience in the US and her country in higher education, as well as in the private and nonprofit sectors. So welcome, Laura, happy to have you again. So I will leave you to really make the most out of our webinar and share lots of very insightful tips and ideas about how to um, search for a job and how to apply for a job. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you all for joining uh, us and, um, and for taking the time to, you know, just to uh, see what, what else you can learn about this, you know, job search process. Um, you probably have heard uh, this, um, that searching for a job is uh, almost a full-time job and, and more than a full-time job is, it, it takes lots of strategy. So, um, let's, let's talk about this and dissect the process and see how we can, um, how we can get results because that's what we, you know, uh, uh, ultimately, we're looking for that job that we we want. Um, so um, there's uh, some things that um, no uh, that we need to keep in mind when we are uh, in, um, um, approaching this uh, this uh, this process. So it, it's important to clarify our goals, right? As then uh, get organized. Um, uh, decide how we are going to, to make it happen and then um, move into action. We're gonna be uh, uh, going through, uh, through all these different stages uh, in more detail. So um, be sure you to take notes. You're gonna get the presentation later, but uh, you know, it's always good to just write that idea or that, that aha, mini aha moment that happens uh, when we, you know, we, we are uh, listening to presentations. So. Um, it's important to clarify our goals, right? W what are we what are we looking for? Um, why are we looking for it? You know, are we are what what's the purpose beh behind that job? Most of us have to work for a living. So you know wages are important, experience. Uh, do we want to gain experience? Do we want to focus on uh, adding value right away because we do have the you know all the the expertise that is needed. Is there another reason? Are we changing careers? Are we have we just finished a boot camp and we want to, you know, reorient um, or redesign our careers? Um, so, in terms of experience, um, it's important to ask ourselves, like, um, um, uh, you know, what kind of experience we want to to gain. Um, and well, we're going to be talking a little bit more on. Uh, on each of these, um, but what what are we looking for? You know, what's important to us? Um, what are our, 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 our values? The, that's the what's important to us. Now, we, are we looking for flexibility? Are we looking for balance between life and work? Are we willing to move? Are we do we did we like the remote uh, uh, mode or do we need do we crave working with people you know in presence? So it's important to get to know ourselves and know what we want out of a job and know our, our working style. Then the absolutely the, the must haves and the must not haves and the what we don't want is very important to keep in mind. So uh, it's important to have that to do list or to have list and not to have list. 
Um, that's, you know, we could also be talking in, uh, about the math haves and the non-negotiables, the, the things that absolutely have to be there and not, and uh, things that don't, that shouldn't be there. Um, expectations, right? Now, sometimes we, we have been working in a, in, a fee, in a specific field and now we decide that we want to move on to something else. And so we, we might do a bootcamp or we might get training and then we have to take a step uh, you know, back in order to take a, a step forward. So sometimes pay is going to suffer because we're not gonna make the same money that we were making. Um, you know, sometimes the position is going to be, uh, you know, just different. We are going to have to stay, uh, or sometimes the step is sideways until we know we, we are able to continue to grow. And, and same thing with responsibility. So what are we willing to give to in order to, uh, to get this new job, right? And then, um, and then we need to um, to get organized. Like, what uh, what do we need to do to get to to get this job? Right? We need to do our research. We need to have. We we have been talking about LinkedIn in previous webinars. We have been also talking about um, uh, well, LinkedIn CV, um, uh, resume writing, and um, and while you're going to be talking about interviewing, which is you know has a, an element of of professional pitch because that's basically it. you know it's uh the interviews your professional pitch so at work so um uh so it's it's very important to get organized you know with, uh, there's going to be a big there should be a big element of networking and 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 um and uh, having, uh, yeah, just having having everything planned out so that this is you now a process that is um, that you can follow and yet you can, you know, uh, it will just uh, get you the results that you want. So um, they, there have to be uh, measurable goals that you need that you, you know will make you feel that you are achieving something. So um, you now if we get a little bit more concrete, it's important to set a schedule. It's important to decide, okay, I'm going to, this is what my day is going to look like. This is how I'm going to plan out my week, my day, my week, my month. Um, when, where am I going to be working? Um, uh, what is that place that I'm going, I'm going to dedicate or to just um, assign for the job hunt? Um, how am I going to just um, see what my progress is? How am I going? Who's going to help me? Um, I always talk about this idea of finding a, a, a job a job search buddy. It doesn't even have to be someone who's looking for the same job. It could be anyone who's, who's looking for a job. And so you can... Yeah, um, remain accountable uh, to each other and just show uh, progress and show share ideas and uh, you know inspire each other and uh, cheer uh, each other up when you know just when there has been a bad day or a not so productive day. So, uh, but you know it's important to spend to just uh, to be concrete to set goals and to um, and to and to you know follow uh, follow through with them. So, um, of course, if you have any uh, good practices that you want to share on the on the chat, you are welcome to do that. Now we are just a small group today, so we can just use this as a um, you know, make it very interactive. Um, so, well, you planned um, your job search. What comes next, right? How? Where are those jobs that we all want? Of course, well, there's lots of. Um, possibilities to find jobs online. Uh, we all know LinkedIn. Um, and uh, then there are some uh, job search sites for technology um, uh, that are very specialized. Then there's, um, well, uh, aside from LinkedIn, uh, there's uh, the big ones, the huge ones, indeed, Glassdoor, etc. But then there are lots of other ones. And uh, we are going to be sharing a list of over 80 uh, job search uh, sites where you can find, you know, you name it. You there's a very uh, there's boutique uh, jobs um, job sites. There's um, more like uh, gener gen uh, generic ones, and um, there's uh, uh, sites dedicated to women, to careers in nonprofit, to you, know, you name it. So we're gonna get that that resource. 
Um, of course, there's, you know, that's, that's what I call the, the more, I, I wouldn't call it reactive, but it's like the, I find a job posted, I apply and I wait and uh, hope that I will get called to, for a, an inter interview. But then there's the more artisanal way of looking for jobs, and that is done through networking. So uh, don't underestimate this. You know, I, I sometimes share my my when I look at my portfolio of projects that I have these days, um, most of them came through networking, through you know having conversations with people, through answering a, you know a question from someone who reached out to me from uh, you know just conversations. That's when you make things happen. So. Do not underestimate this. And um, well, you've had a, already had a, a webinar about the topic. You can go and uh, and review it if you or see it or watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, but this is just um, uh, something that to keep in mind. Of course, you know the very proactive way of finding jobs: contacting the companies yourself, com contacting the people who work in companies. Um, um, so. That, that is another way to, to find jobs. And then participate in events. I was on, on vacation recently and I was, I was, at, um, was having a breakfast somewhere and there was a, there was a, a framed uh, picture that had some flowers on them. And it, it said, it was very simple, attend more events. And I thought that that was just brilliant. It was so simple. That it was brilliant. Attend more events. It's that's how you make things happen by talking to people, by introducing yourself, by talking about the things that energize you, by talking about the things that you want to do, by finding connections and affinities with other people. So attend those events, even when you are wondering, should I go? Should I not? Just go. You can always say, well, it didn't work out, but it, it didn't help me, but go. Because chances are something good will, uh, good will come. Laura, up. I love to take this moment to share our story because I, how I met Laura was uh, I did a master's degree at a university in Argentina. And during the pandemic, uh, all the events uh, transitioned online. And she facilitated a workshop around finding our value as professionals. And me as a graduate, I participated and I added every speaker on my LinkedIn. Among them, Laura. And then I actually reached out to Laura to ask for what is called like an informational interview because Laura was a career coach and I wanted to learn more, more about career coaching. And so I said, hi, Laura, my name is Mirta. I'm a graduate student at this at university you work at. I'd love to know more about what you do, your role. And she asked, she's great. She offered me a Zoom call and we discussed for 15 minutes, half an hour about career uh, coaching. And then at the moment, I was looking for coaches for virtual internships. And I posted online, I'm looking for career coaches. And Laura sent me a message and said, hey, do you remember me? We had this conversation. What is this role about? So it was totally unexpected. And I'm super happy because Laura is an excellent coach and we work so well together. And this came out through an event I participated, which I was just like saying, why not? So things, good things come out just out of random events we attend. So attending events is super essential. You never know when your next uh, job possibility may come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's a perfect example. And yeah, that you never know when those aha moments, when those affinities are going to happen. So um, hold just a second. I, uh, yeah, I'm... <laughs> Just a cup of water. <laughs> so um, we never know when those uh, when those aha moments or affinity, you know, conversations are gonna happen. And um, so yeah, show up. That's that's the invitation and have conversations. And the other thing is networking is not what's in it for me. It's I think about what's in it for others. How can I help others? Because you know, then then things start to happen. Just think about what you can do for others what can you can give to someone else um so let's keep moving um well um where are those jobs so th this is just um um uh, some some ideas i i talked about conventional search and artisanal way 
uh, participate participate on those field related events. Jo join organizations and associations. I know there's like for women in technology, there's lots of um, um, associations and organizations. You're gonna get th those names uh, in the in the job uh, boards um, document. Um, but you probably you know you can find lots uh, more. Uh, engage in conversation, but we were talk, talking about help out. You know, you might think, well, what? How can? How could I help? You would be surprised. You know, people in other, from other generations like me, uh, we are. We want to know what's going on in the life of the young people and not so young people who are people who are switching careers, people who are uh, daring to do some, something different, people who are in technology. I, you know, I I like to learn. I want to keep up with what's going on in the world. So. Um, yeah, so uh, now just uh, see you know, how we can be of value to others. Um, follow people on LinkedIn. You know, when you, when you, um, you, you must have talked about that, this in the previous webinar, but um, follow people who are doing things that you want to do. You know, you, would, you will be inspired. You will get um, ideas. You will get uh, information about what's going on and, and you, can, you will read between the lines. Um, start sharing content on LinkedIn. There's just 1% of people on LinkedIn who share content. So um, start, you know, where are those jobs? People, well, just start by showing up and, sh and sharing what you have to share and talk about the things that you care about and people will start seeing you. And that's sometimes how uh, jobs come to you. So, uh, and engage with other people's content on LinkedIn. You know, that's the very, you know, don't the straight line to a job, but these are things that um, make, um, just enhance your opportunities to find those jobs. So, um, of course, there's the, the job boards uh, that we, we mentioned, like the big ones, the boutique ones, the specialized ones, the generic ones, and so forth, but uh, you're gonna get those. Um, so let's keep moving. Um, well, of course, we have to talk about LinkedIn. We have to continue to talk about LinkedIn. It's, it's an amazing um, network uh, uh, and uh, it has a, a billion users and well, all the numbers are just uh, beyond, um, you know, just you know, uh, my comprehension, but um, so, you probably know you can use the search field when you go uh, on LinkedIn and you can look for um, uh, just to the, the name of the, of the of a company or the name of a, a role and then you just filter and then you can just find those um, those jobs and then you can also use the jobs page you go to the jobs option and you just uh, write your keywords and you will be directed directed to those uh, jobs so that's the easy way um so we're gonna apply uh just talk about um applying for a job uh you find uh, a job offer and now you have to you know proceed so you need to what do you need to do you have to show your uniqueness uh, sometimes people get um get, get a little bit discouraged because you have you see a job post and uh, there's like 178 people who applied so um, of course, we need to to show uniqueness, and that's why we've been talking about how to write a good LinkedIn profile and 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 a good uh, CV resume. Um, so let's see what we can do to um, you know just to um, to pump up our possibilities, right? Uh, well, you need to demonstrate the value that you will add to the team or company, and for that. The job description is our best friend. We need to take as much as advantage of the job description as possible. Sometimes we're in the, in, on the autopilot and we just click send, 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 and um, and we forget that we can, you know, just uh, do my, uh, just um, some minor adjustments to be that answer to that em uh, employer's problem, uh, reason for which they are looking for for uh, talent. Um, so look at the job description. For each section, take notes, just um, read it, reread it. Um, ask yourself, what are they looking for? What is that pain point that, that this employer has? What, why do they need to hire someone? What are they looking for? How will, you know, they, they, how will this candidate solve their need? Um, 
So here, here's a, like an, an example of a, of a job post. So you will see the, um, you will see that the, 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 the name of the role, uh, well, the location, the, the type of employment. Um, then you're gonna read the overview, uh, the job responsibilities, what, they, what this person needs to have, um, and then uh, there's always, uh, usually there's a, a, a company description. Um, so what, uh, things that we need to, we can, we can um, look at when we are just looking at the, uh, look for when we are looking at the job description. The first thing that, um, that, the, that in the description, in the job description is probably one of the most important ones is it's the no it's the pain point. So those first lines on the job description, read them and reread them, and put yourself empath empathize with the with the employer. That is what they need this person to do. So first lines that's that's key. Uh, of course, then the job responsibilities. You know, I, when I speak with recruiters, they tell me, you know, we have you know for us, you know, the job description or the job post is like our our um, dream list. Um, if you have 70% of what they require, apply anyway. You will know you can use your common sense. You know, if they absolutely need something and that's one of the things that you don't have, you're not gonna apply, right? But if there's, um, if, we, if they ask for solid knowledge or experience in something and you don't have, you know, the three years experience, but we have you have a little less, no, just use your common sense. Yeah, and I'd like to add something. I don't know how many women we have in the room, but there are studies that show that oftentimes women uh, have most of the requirements to apply for a job, but they don't apply, which means that they basically run out of, they, they leave uh, the possibility of actually having an interview and landing a job just because they get too critical and say like, no, I don't have this and that. So be mindful that sometimes we may be our worst critic and we may say, no, I don't have everything they ask for. Usually uh, job descriptions are like a dream, right? For human resources people. They said, I will ask everything I want on uh, for from an ideal candidate, an ideal candidate but they are willing to compromise on something. So don't get yourself too discouraged if you don't uh, get all have all the requirements. It's normal, especially if you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, since we are at this topic, uh, when you write, when there's um, a requirement for a cover letter or a statement of why you're applying um, to the job, never use those although I don't have this, or even though I, I don't have this, always focus on the positive. What do, what do, what do you have? What can you do? Uh, you know, you have those two and a half years experience. You have the experience of, uh, with, um, your experiences uh, through internships, just, you know, lean on those. They're always on the positive, what you can do for others. So, um well sometimes um you will find other other pieces of information like benefits immig immigration status information the application instructions it's very important to follow that because sometimes they are testing they are trying to see if you are following through you know with all the requirements or if you're taking the time if you're reading if you care you know do you really want this so um and then um of course, yeah, if you just when you are applying to the, those companies, this, this company is global. See if you have, you know, if you have someone in your network who works there, ask questions. I did this, you know, every time I apply to something, that's the first thing I do. I reach out to some to people who work in that company or in that place and and uh, I ask them, you know, tell me uh, how, what is it like to work there? What do you like about it? What you don't like about it? and just uh, pick their brain and see, you know, people love to give advice and to share their, their experiences. And then when you go to that interview and people, they might ask you, do you know anyone who works there? You can say, well, I, I connected with so-and-so and, -so and uh, it was really, you know, uh, insightful and blah, blah. So, um, of course, if you, if the, if the um, job uh, post has the name of the recruiter, 
you know, you can uh, go, you know, just um, check him or her out and see, you know, just uh, uh, see who they are, what they share, what, you know, what, if they share content, what they talk about, you know, it's good to, to get your, have your research done before those uh, for next steps. Um, so, well, um, things that um, are important uh, to, to keep in mind when we're looking at the job posting, we talked about repetition, we're going to talk about two more things, you know, right, the um, well, the list of um, duties um, and qualifications, uh, the, the first few bullets are the, the most important uh, aspects of the job. So make sure that when you, um, uh, well, first of all, that you, that you uh, show in your LinkedIn profile that you have those skills and uh, highlight them, uh, both in, on LinkedIn and in whatever document they require. If it's, if it's your resume, make sure that you highlight those. And then keywords. Um, those are words that pop up more than once. And so, um, so just look for those, scan for those. What are those keywords? And uh, sometimes it's as easy as uh, copy pasting the, the whole text and to put it on a, on a word cloud, uh, on a word cloud um, designer or, um, and, or yeah, and um, just see what comes up uh, as far as keywords. So, uh, but this is like I said in the beginning, you know, the, key, the, the job uh, post is your best friend there is all the information. So don't just read it on autopilot, just read it once, read it twice, understand it, read between the lines, and then just get ready to show um, how you, why you, you would be the best candidate for it. Um, so, well, um, we, um, we, we already- uh, Yes, uh, this, this part, Yes. Yeah, we already read uh, uh, yes. saw this example, but you can just practice with uh, with uh, a job post that you you know you want to apply to, and uh, and just check for those uh, three three um, elements. Uh, so, yeah, definitely <laughs> applying to jobs can be mentally, emotionally, and physically drain draining. So, um, just don't apply to the you know every job that you see just make sure that it that you're a good fit to, to for it that it's something that you really want that uh you know just is aligned with what's important to you and uh, you know just put your energy in those things that you know you really want or want to pursue or want or care about um so of course you know if you are um if you're not employed you might have more time to to spend uh and to you know to apply for more than, than for more jobs and to just do more research but um yeah so uh don't no just just be be strategic don't um don't uh, just go um and apply to every single thing you see because um um it's important because usually, and, and especially if you're going to apply to more than one role in a company, you know, or or to or you're going to go through a third party employer, and uh, you don't want to have them see that you are applying to every single thing because they are not going to take you seriously if you do. So, um, well, best practices for um, for applying, right? Um, well, the process um, um, will vary depending on, on the job search, on the employer, um, yeah, and then uh, avoid applying to those multiple um, jobs. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so, um, well, and um, just like we said before, applying to, um, uh, to, just following following your uh, just all the indications, all the requirements for uh, for for submitting your application and um, writing the subject. Sometimes you know we just just press send send send. That's what they want. Apply uh, in this case, application to project manager role, and so do that. 
Um, and then of course, well, this we talked about this in the in the other webinar, but when you attach your CV, make sure that it has the, your name as uh, you know in the subject, uh, in the, as the, the name of the, the document is your name and last name. You want to make people's lives easier, easy. So just follow on, the, on all of those um, uh, requirements. Um, well, we talk, um, yeah, we haven't talked about this, but when you apply on LinkedIn, we're going back. We're going back to LinkedIn. But there's two ways of application, right? The easy apply, you just press easy apply, and it's all done. Uh, then the normal apply, you will be sent to a, a website, and uh, you will continue with the application for uh, process, and you will you might need to enter information and um, and uh, just to complete the process. These are very important things to keep in mind to get ready for for application before you apply. Take time to read about the company. Just what is this company? You know, if you know it, if you don't, if you know it, know it even uh, more in depth. If you don't, just get to know it. Um, get to know the the, the recruiting process. Um, Find someone and ask them. They know. They can tell you. They uh, if you can find some someone in talent or in in HR. But if not, just find anyone. Anyone can be an ambassador to the to their company. So um, ask them. Um, and then, of course, tailor your CV to the position. You know, it's it's just make it takes a few minutes and it makes a huge difference when you are being that answer to that person that recruiters need uh, make sure that your cv um, ha can pass the ats uh, the applicant tracking system so uh, that is important and never uh, you know we never get tired of reminding uh, about this and then a cover letter sometimes the cover letter is something you are, you just attach or sometimes it's part of the application process or sometimes it's required sometimes it's, it's not um, some people are all for it and some people don't care much i think that it never hurts so if you if you have a good presentation where you can it's it's just an, an additional opportunity for you to talk about yourself so um then um, other things, uh, well, we, we spoke about uh, resumes and LinkedIn, but make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date um, because people are gonna go and check you out. They want to see who you are professionally. What is, you know, who are you telling the world that you are? Make sure that, you know, online presence is, is not just, oh, I have a good uh, profile and that's it. Uh, online presence also means sharing content. So I would say, I always say, at least share something once a month so that when people go and check you out, they will go and see, you know, the, that the last piece of uh, content that was shared was a month ago and not six months ago or never shared anything. So you know, it could be an article that you read. You don't have to pro produce new con new 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 content um, from scratch. But if you read something, if you read something that you found interesting, if you if you read something on LinkedIn, you know, just repost it with a comment. What, what was interesting about it? What, did, what resonated with you? Why are you sharing it? Uh, you, you, you've heard about some training that you found interesting that is free or it's interesting. Well, share, you know, give value. And that, that is also part of building a a strong online presence, network, um, uh, and um, you know, and connect with uh, with other people uh, in your field, and uh, well, uh, that's part of you know the getting ready. Uh, craft a unique resume, uh, create a portfolio, share your portfolio on LinkedIn uh, when you are applying, uh, or in, if you apply through other job boards. And stay updated. That 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 is something that you can share as content on LinkedIn. Um, if you if you are if you if you are uh, um, acquiring new certifications or training, make sure that you update your your profile so that people will see that. Sometimes we forget to to uh, to update. You now we keep learning and we forget to show it off. And it's important. You now if we don't do it, no one is going to do it for us. Um, 
well, we talked about this, apply strategically, um, just focus on quality over quantity, tailor your application and um, research company culture, prepare for those technical interviews. That's important. Um, you know, that's part of your mo many of those uh, job search processes. So, um, well, utilize job boards and employer sites and, and engage with the recruiters. That's and just reach out, contact, just say, tell people, I just saw this job uh, opportunity. I applied to it. I found it very interesting because of this and that. I would like to invite you to connect. Show, um, show proactive, show that you're proactive. Now, I remember back to, uh, to Mirta's, um, um, to Mirta's anecdote. Now, when I applied for the job, I was interviewed and so forth. And then I remember she said, well, we are gonna, I asked her what, what are the next steps in the job uh, process and the job search process. And, uh, and she said, we're gonna be making a decision by, I don't know, I think it was like mid, mid September. So I wrote it down in my, in my calendar. So on, on September 15th, I was following up with her. So, and, uh, yeah, so be, be proactive. And Laura, you did something that I found really, really nice and I really liked it and show that you knew about career uh, development and job searching process because after the, the session, the interview on the following day, you sent me a message saying, hi, Mirta, I really liked our interview. I'm very excited about the possibility of working for virtual internships as a career mentor. And that made me really understood that I thought, mm -hmm. okay, she knows, right? Because one also good practice is to, after the interview, send an email thanking the recruiter for the interview. And that's the opportunity for you to mention anything that you haven't, maybe you've forgotten in the, you forgot during the interview or you you feel that you haven't um, expressed or highlighted um, enough or there was, I don't know, an example that uh, they asked you some very important question during the interview, if we are in the interview um, process, right? And then you said, oh, I now remember, or, or how come I didn't mention this experience? Mm -hmm. Then this is the opportunity for you to say, I really appreciated meeting you, and I am very excited about the possibility of working uh, for you and their, your team, and actually, and you say whatever it is that you missed or that you want to stress. That's a really good practice. And I remember Laura doing so, and I felt like hmm, she she knows her thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's just, um, yeah, sometimes it's just um, like a bullet, some bullet points with why you think you would make that great candidate. And so it's just, um, it's a good way to, you know, just to show that you really want this. That's, you know, that's what we want to show, right? Did I really want this job. So, um, well, um, yeah, hey, this is what we are, <laughs> are talking about. Send an email directly to the HR department or the talent team or the hiring manager. Um, you can, if you don't know who they are, you can figure it out. Oh, I have... Um, I have a, I, I might, we might want to share it in the follow-up email. There's, there's a site where you can just find any, almost any, anybody's um, email address, a corp, a work email address. And, you know, just by figuring out, having the name and the last name. And, and um, if you do have that and, um, and the name of the company, you can figure out the email address. So yeah, you might, we might pop it in, uh, in the follow-up um, email. Or I will pop it up uh, now in the in the chat if I can find it. But um, yeah, just you know, this be proactive and um, and uh, you know, just um, you only have one 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 opportunity to make an impression. So um, and this is the for the for the spontaneous uh, for the spontaneous way of introducing yourself. You know, you want to you know secure your own opportunities, and sometimes it's just. Uh, the first answer will be no, thank you. No, we are not looking. And but you never know; it might come. There might come a time when they will be looking for someone, and you will, you know, you will be the name that will pop up. So uh, this is important. Uh, we don't want to be, you know, just be a pest by following up every day. 
but no, wait two weeks after submitting your CV and then you can follow up. You can show, um, you can you can follow up, you can you can ask about the process, always be kind, always be mindful, um, keep in mind, you know, the cultural differences that some cultures we are, we might be more like up, you know, just frontal and direct. But for some, we might want to you know, just use our words, uh, you know, in, in more like a, um, like a, not spontaneous, what would be the word? Um, yeah, just, you know, just be, um, be mindful of the, the fact that you know some people um, might need you to not be so direct and then um, and then also but then you know um, do ask um, about the status of the the job uh, search process you can use that opportunity to to remind people why you think you would be good for the job so that those that's when those um uh, all those bullet points come in and they don't have to write now 20 but now focus on three four reasons why you would make a good candidate and um and then uh you know just always um uh, remember to thank people and so forth um yeah and so the, yeah that's it uh well track your applications um you know just a simple ex uh, spreadsheet will just make sure that you don't miss anything. So, like who, uh, who, how did I find this job? How, you know, how did I reach out to them? When was the last time I? I when was the, my contact uh, done? Who do I know? Did I talk to someone in the company? Um, no, you can just get creative with that uh, with that spreadsheet, and so you will know, you know when you have to follow up, when you have to. Um, um, just take action on, on, on whatever you you need to. Um, but basically, it's you know, the job search process. I, I was reading something about about this today. You know, when I was checking my 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 incoming emails, and I found that I, there's someone I follow that I really like. You know, he's always right, spot on on. on everything he shares and he was talking about the job search and the fact that sometimes it's frustrating and you can either focus on be a victim or be a, a protagonist so it, um focus on the positive uh count all your um you know all your positives uh, all the great things that you bring in in uh in the shape of expertise or potential um and then just go get out there show this is the time to show off we don't we cannot wait for other people to think that we are the greatest we have to do it ourselves so that's why our career storytelling is important and we need to go out there and uh, flaunt it and then we need to be proactive we need to make, to make things happen we have to be to you know apply to jobs that are posted but then try to be creative in, in finding jobs between the lines. And that sometimes uh, means having a conversation with a stranger. Mirta was a stranger to me and just having a conversation, getting out there, talking to people, talking about what we are doing and what we uh, and what we what we are doing and what we want to do. Asking questions, listening to other people. It's not just about ourselves. Sometimes it's really more, like more enriching to us to listen to other people because that's how we can understand that how they can help us also. So um, yeah, and and this is you now a, a very um, very special time for no technology uh, um, professionals because um, there's. There's um, there's a lot of talent competing for those jobs, so it's important to show your uniqueness. We talked, we we passed it rap, uh, very fast, but you know your your soft skills. Make ah, you... that that was a perfect uh um word mention. Great that you're saying this because in the Q and A I have a question that says mm -hmm. um being someone in tech and knowing like uh the hard having the hard skills that the job requires how can I stand out from other candidates what is the importance what's the importance of the soft skills in the tech industry what do you think Laura yeah. well this is what I think of course you know I would think and I'm not going to generalize but I would think that you know if you are in UI UX or in just let's well let's take this as an example 
they're gonna people are gonna want to make sure that you have all the skills the tech skills necessary to do the job but i you know what are we hired for? We, you know, when I speak with employers, I do I do employer engagement at the university, so that's one of my roles. And so when I talk to them, like people, that's what people tell me: we need, we want. What are we looking for when we when we are looking for talent? We are looking for people who can solve problems, who can, who have positive attitudes, who who can work well with others, who can communicate well. You know, right now it's Figma or whatever you are using, and in a few years it's going to be something else. Also, learnability, your ability to learn, your ability to be comfortable with chaos, with uh, uncertainty, with change. That's something else for which people hire. So uh, make sure that you work on those. Like learnability, uh, ability to work in chaotic environments, flexibility, agility, um, a good attitude. Um, embrace you know, the collaboration with others, co good communication, and, and well, of course, problem solving. Uh, like asking the what if questions, uh, asking the you know, connecting the dots. That's what we are hired for. Um, so, um, yeah, that's what I would say. You know, you do, do work on those uh, tech skills. Be you know always uh, on the lookout for what's new, and because I I you know we kind of you know we don't want to get behind, but um, but those, the soft skills are just what makes people, you know, um, grow. I think that's my perspective on this. Excellent. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, this has been really, really interesting. Um, someone is asking, what approach should I use when applying for remote jobs? Say you're in Africa, but you want a software engineer role in the UK remotely. Mm -hmm. what approach um well first i would just make sure that they they you know they, there's jobs um and i'm, I'm not a, a recruiter but i would think um if a job is um remote worldwide i think sometimes uh sometimes uh, it's remote but there's some requirements as to you know who can apply um so that might be um the first thing that i would look at um and then well just uh that that's as far as you know the application and then then what we what we mentioned uh here you now we're reaching out to people who work in that company and uh, uh just try to to get to know as much about the company as possible uh i don't know if you want to you know just clarify or or, or um just uh if that was you know what you were referring to or um, I don't see the, the question, but let's see. Yeah, I think that if the job is fully remote, then chances are open for everyone, right? If it doesn't say uh, that people need to be located at some uh, special mm. part of the world, then you have as many chances as anyone else. So from mm. that, that perspective, I think it's important to make yourself out there, show your value, what you bring into the table, and why not also use your intercultural skills to make you stand out, right? Like really uh, showcasing what you can bring if you are from another culture. Uh, make sure that, for instance, um, I'm from Argentina, but I've lived uh, in the UK because I did my master's in the UK. And this being a remote company, for me, it was important to showcase that I understand the way the British way of working and the American also, and I've, I've had my experience. So I know uh, this culture, but also I bring lots of experience from my own culture. So make sure that uh, you can showcase your intercultural skills if, if that's your case. And usually when we work remotely, we do have this background, right? Because uh, the possibility of remote jobs allows us to precisely be in the other part of the world, which oftentimes means we do not have the same cultural language from the company that is looking for employees. And that brings a new value as well. So make sure also that the you, you showcase this as an added value and something that makes you unique, right? Besides, of course, your technical skills and what it is required for uh, the job. Um, we have a question in the chat, Laura. Do you think you can answer it or shall yes. I? 
yes, uh, having no experience on on a specific field, um, uh, and you say I I know many different topics in cybersecurity, but I you know when I read the job description, I feel they will not take me. What's your advice? Do I have to go uh, do more online courses and and get more certificates, then apply for jobs, or just apply for jobs and see what happens? Um, I'm all for learning, but I think that sometimes they, if they are looking for the experience, the best way is to you know just um, I would say try. You know, people hire for competence, but people also hire. Uh, once you have candidates who are equally qualified, they will look for people they trust. So go and tap into your network. Show them that you really that the cybersecurity is your thing. That really that's what you want to where you want to add value. And so get them like just um, have them see, you know, samples of your work or your, you know, just um, see what you what what would make you a good candidate and you now just tap into your own network. And that's why it's so important to go out and reach out to people and, you know, engage in conversations. And then, um, you know, just what I'm trying to say is just find people who will, who know you working prof in, a, in a professional um uh, uh, as in your professional persona and um and those will be the, per the people who will give you the the possibility the opportunity now that doesn't mean that, it, that they won't call you, uh, you just keep doing that but you now just to widen your possibilities um uh just um you know just engage find your crowd I, I will always say that find your crowd your tech crowd people who will um, who can you who you can engage with in conversation and show you that you now what is you now what is it about this field that really uh, resonates with you and made you, you know choose it and you now just show your value. Thank you, Laura, for this amazing webinar. Um, I've shared Laura's LinkedIn profile on the chat. Make sure you add Laura and also please make sure to follow the best practices we've seen in our previous webinar. Whenever we are going to uh, send a connection request to LinkedIn, it is always better to send a small message saying, hi, Laura, I participated at your webinar. Uh, I really appreciate it, blah, blah, blah. And thanks for being, um, thanks for connecting with me. So this person knows uh, where you're connecting from. So I also shared my LinkedIn profile. You can add me to your professional network. We'll be happy to connect. And remember we have a webinar tomorrow about hybrid and remote collaboration. You should have received an invitation for that one. And on Thursday, the same time as today, we'll have the last webinar of our series on interviewing. So I hope you enjoyed our webinar. Thank you so much, Laura, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for being here as well. So see you next time. And thank, thank you. you. Ah, thank you. I look forward to connecting. So uh, send me that message. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.